I get a lot of inspiration from travel. You know, as you see these kind of landscapes just like flash by. Architecture inspires me a lot. I've been thinking about like how things kind of inhabit those spaces and like what story it could tell. Where could that be? Or who could live in there? And what can they do in it? And then you can go away and recreate it. I'm an artist in video games. So I create everything you see, everything you can think of that goes in a game, visually speaking. So we are a micro game development studio. There's just five of us. And we've been doing this um, for two years now. Came straight out of university, having all of us met there doing games or graphic design or similar things. We came straight out of university and won a student competition, which allowed us to kind of get a bit of funding. And then we were able to begin making our first proper game. A level designer or the game designer will give me you know, his vision for what the space is and what gameplay happens in there. But then it's my job to kind of bring them to life in terms of the visuals. So I'll be given, you know, walls that are just white cubes. So I need to decide, you know, what architectural style are they going to be? What kind of buildings? I've been playing games since the Sega Mega Drive when I was like four years old. And it's always been like a really huge hobby, really big part of my life. Um, it was just only realizing that I could do it as a job came and I was much older. And when you've got your, uh, your picture that you want to try and recreate, I think you know you're just working toward it slowly, kind of methodically. My experiences of art in school were somewhat limited. I, I didn't do it at GCSE or A level, so once I'd finished doing it in year nine, that was the end for me. I just kind of was doing the game stuff or game related things just as a hobby. Um, so I'd get home from school and that would be like, oh great, I'm home from school, so now I've got time to do this, which is just a bit of fun. And then gradually just started working with people my age online to like put stuff in games and, and edit things that were already in games. And then started to realize I could make my own stuff. And that the closer I got to university, I realized it was actually a viable a thing, you could actually get paid to do this. And I was enjoying it, so it seemed natural to kind of just progress into it. So I had to have A-levels to go to university, but they were just kind of baseline grades. They didn't mind what it was in, but you had to have a good portfolio. I just kind of did my portfolio in my spare time. So we pretty much finished uh, a building for the level, and it looks really nice but it's just lacking that fine detail, especially not understanding yet what kind of texture it's gonna have, you know, whether it's concrete or brick. So I'm gonna go out now and try and find some more detailed real world examples. You kind of see parts of it as being an artist, but then there's so much design and there's so much thought about product that, you know, so it is a piece of art, but you do want to sell it. So, Compared to just you know putting paint on a canvas and it can be anything you want it to be and you have that kind of freedom, this is more um, like targeted. So now we've pretty much got the building how we want it to look and it's looking pretty good. So we'll start the process now of starting to replace all these boring cubes with the building. And then the whole process of making a level really is just doing that for every object you can think of. So if there's a horrible blocky car cube, we go and make a nice looking car, go and research the car, and then we replace those cubes with the finished model. The tools for making a game can seem quite complex, but just, just drawing in general and just keeping, keeping thinking about art and keeping creating stuff of any sort is just a great way into games, I think. Mm -hmm. 